The top stories tonight in Y News. Department of the Interior and Local Government Secretary Ben-Hur Abalos names the fifth and last member of the five-man committee who will assess and evaluate the courtesy resignation submitted by the third-level officers of the Philippine National Police. The Senate leadership shows optimism that majority of senators will vote to ratify the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership, or RCEP, despite concerns from several agricultural groups. The Department of Justice believes that a United Nations or UN special rapporteur on extrajudicial killing may help improve the Philippines' legal system prepares for a forensic pathology training. And a powerful earthquake hits Turkey and Syria, leaving thousands of people dead, injured or trapped in a destruction. Good evening, Philippines and the world. Today is Tuesday, February 7, 2023. Join us in the next hour as we deliver today's top stories around the Philippines and in other parts of the world. I am William Theo. We are also seen at 1,935 satellite monitoring centers nationwide and via live streaming worldwide through the UN TV News and Rescue social media channels. I am Hargin Delgado. First in the news, the Department of the Interior and Local Government or DILG Secretary Ben-Hur Abalos named the fifth and last member of the five-man committee who will assess and evaluate the courtesy resignation submitted by the third-level officers of the Philippine National Police. Lea Ilagan will tell us why. The Department of the Interior and Local Government, or DILG, announced that the five-man committee will convene next week. This is to finalize the guidelines they will use in the assessment and evaluation of the submitted courtesy resignation of the third-level officers of the Philippine National Police, or PNP. DILG Secretary Benhar Abalos also named the fifth member of the five-man committee. He is retired Court of Appeals Associate Justice Melchor Sadang. Si Justice Sadang ay uh, siya po ay naging uh, Associate Justice ng Court of Appeals noong 2011 up to 2017. Siya rin ay naging presiding judge ng RTC Cavite City noong taong 2000 up to 2011. Siya ay naging law professor ng University of the East noong 1999 hanggang 2001. No? At uh, siya po ay talagang uh, dumaan sa sa talagang sa pag screen no? The DIL Secretary thanks Justice Sadang in willingness to help cleanse the PNP organization. Secretary Abalos also said that a five-man committee are welcome to accept information or report from other intelligence unit. Uh, lahat ng available, kukunin po iyan, no? but importante rito ay talagang anuhin mo maigi, makilatis mo maigi eh. kung ano ba rito ang uh, totoo, ano ang hindi. No, ito ay uh, pag-aaral lang po nila. Earlier, Secretary Abalos refused to name the fifth member of advisory group due to the request of Justice Sadang for security reason. Leia Ilagan, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. The closed fishing season in northern Palawan ended last January 31 after three months. Commercial fishing vessels are now allowed to catch fish in the area. According to the Bureau of Fisheries and Aquatic Resources, or BFAR, they are expecting an increase in harvest and drop in prices of round scad. About 89% of the round scad supply in Navota's fish port has been sourced from Palawan. Prices of imported and local round scad in Metro Manila markets range from 220 to 260 pesos per kilogram. Before noted that around 20,000 metric tons of imported fish already arrived in the country. Last November, the Department of Agriculture allowed the importation of 25,000 metric tons, including round scad, to augment the supply. Well, following the supply and demand uh, situation, we expect na kapapala yung presyo ng uh, ating uh, locally produced kalunggong kapag uh, nag-improve na ang uh, supply natin.
Meanwhile, the Philippine government is set to deport another two Japanese fugitives tomorrow evening. Dante Amento tells us why. The Pasay City Regional Trial Court Branch 109 dismissed both cases against wanted Japanese nationals Yuki Watanabe and Tumunubu Saito. The court granted the prosecution's motion to withdraw the cases. Department of Justice or DOJ Secretary Crispin Boying Rimulia said Watanabe and Saito will be deported tomorrow, February 8, since there's no legal impediment already. We're not sure yet, but uh, they will be deported tomorrow for sure. And uh, they'll be back in Japan in a very short period of time. Meanwhile, earlier this morning, the Philippine government, through the Bureau of Immigration, already deported Japanese fugitives Kyoto Imamura and Toshia Fujita through Japan Airlines Flight 746 back to Japan. They were first cleared of their cases in the country. The two form part of the first batch of total of four Japanese nationals who have been identified by the Japanese police to be the leaders of a criminal organization in their home country. They have been charged with robbery, fraud, and theft in Japan. They are considered fugitives from justice. Rimulia added this effort by the government is a signal that the Philippines is willing to cooperate with other nations to fight criminality. We at the department, together with the Bureau of Immigration and the National Bureau of Investigation, hope that this will not only strengthen the ties between the Philippines and Japanese government, we hope that this shows, this shows the sincerity and genuine effort to curb any illicit or illegal maneuvers meant to erode the credibility of our justice system. Dante Amento, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people. We give glory to God. The Senate leadership is optimistic that majority of senators will vote to ratify the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership, or RCEP, despite concerns from several agricultural groups. However, a lawmaker believes there is some kind of force working to rush the Senate's approval of the trade agreement. This report will tell us why. Senate President Juan Miguel Migzubiri is hopeful that the Senate will soon ratify the Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership, or RCEP, dubbed as the world's biggest free trade agreement. This despite concerns from several agricultural groups that the RCEP will adversely affect the country's agriculture sector. In today's hearing of the Senate Committee on Foreign Relations, agricultural groups stressed that the government should first help develop the agriculture sector before entering into the agreement. Under the RCEP, the flow of selected agriculture cultural and industrial goods will be further liberalized through reduction and or removal of tariffs. Before you ratify, patupad nyo naman yung design, patupad nyo naman yung batas. Sinsyan na ho na hindi mababaho ang tiwala namin dun sa NEDA, sa papangalan ako na ho, NEDA, BA, and to a certain extent DTI, kasi yun ang karanasan ho namin, ipinabayaan ho kami. Wala hong path for development, sinasabi protected kami, never. Yung anti-sparring na, na batas, eh, 2016 na uh, linaban natin yun. Up to now, wala pang isang nakulog na economic sabotage. So, ayusin sana mabuti at pausapin yung industry kung talaga ba makakatulong sa industry. Kasi uh, si Presidente naman pupunta sa other countries, no? nagkakaroon ng bilateral agreement. Baka yun, yung direction na yun, mas maganda pa. The Department of Trade and Industry, or DTI, maintains that the country will benefit from RCEP by providing enhanced market access and a stable regulatory framework. Mas simplified ang rules dito sa RCEP compared mo sa ASEAN China, sa ASEAN Korea, and of course sa ASEAN Japan. So kung ako yung trader, ako yung exporter, ako yung importer, mas madali sa akin na mag-angkat nito. Siyempre mas cheaper kasi simplified yung rules, therefore na-lessen mo yung administrative cost. So yun po yung mga halimbawa, uh, your honor, kung bakit po talagang napakalaki ng advantage po natin, it will be part of the RCEP agreement. Zubiri stresses that out of all the member states of the Association of Southeast Asian Nations or ASEAN, only the Philippines has not ratified the agreement. In September 2021, former President Rodrigo Duterte signed the RCEP ratification. However, the Senate needs to ratify first the agreement before it can take effect. 
The Senate needs to secure two-thirds or 16 affirmative votes for the RCEP to be ratified. I don't believe we'll be able to get uh, 16 votes. For example, we want to send uh, um, uh, products to South Korea, to New Zealand. They will always work with countries that are within the economic partnership. Ang makukuha ang produkto ay mga countries kasama sa RCEP. Tayo may iiwan tayo sa kampungan. Zubiri adds they had a meeting with Executive Secretary Lucas Bersamin, who reiterated that RCEP is a priority measure of President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. But Senator Aimee Marcos, who chairs the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, believes there is some kind of force that is pushing to rush the implementation of RCEP in the Philippines. For Marcos, the government, particularly the Department of Agriculture, Bureau of Customs, and the DTI, are not solving the problems of the agriculture sector, such as large-scale smuggling and mass importation. The presidential sister says she could not in all good conscience support the agreement if it will endanger the livelihood of Filipinos. A technical working group will be formed over the weekend to set the guidelines that the national government should observe in implementing the agreement. A special committee will also be constituted to monitor the RCEP implementation. Zubiri says the Senate is expected to ratify RCEP before Congress goes into session break on March 25. Harleen Delgado, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve of the people. We give glory to God. The Department of Justice believes that a United Nations or UN special rapporteur on extrajudicial killing may help improve the Philippines' legal system. With this, the DOJ prepares for a forensic pathology training that will be conducted by the UN rapporteur. Ashur Kadapan Jr. details why. The credentials that forensic pathologist Dr. Morris did bald bins bear are very important to the Philippines' aim to build capacity in the country's legal system. Among his missions and projects, Dr. Ted Balbins voluntarily provided his service in identifying victims who died from the onslaught of Typhoon Yolanda in Leyte. The Department of Justice or DOJ is optimistic that this will also be a way to address wrongful death situations and to be able to follow orders that they will implement in the future. Justice Secretary Crispin Boying Remulia explains this as he meets the forensic expert in the DOJ office today, February 7. Ted Bald Bins, however, coincidingly serves as United Nations or UN Special Rapporteur on Extrajudicial Killing or EJK. But the DOJ Secretary clarifies that he is only here to provide his expertise on forensic pathology and not on any political issues. Because these are the things that are being uh, neglected in the, in the past, we want to, to ensure that our legal system is up, up to date and up to the standards of the world. That's why we are doing this capacity building and one thing that we can always say is that uh, the doctors helping us with this uh, effort are among the best in the world that's why we invited them to the philippines uh, for no other reason but that the doj also discussed with the u.n special rapporteur the plan to conduct forensic pathology training in the middle of this year dr tin ball bins will conduct the training which may take 14 to 21 days we're looking forward to really uh, when he comes back, we will already have, uh, we would have already prepared a class for 35 people, 35 medical doctors. And uh, we will have prosecutors also on hand. The, 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 the senior prosecutors will be asked to join the, this exercise. Asher Kadapan Jr., UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. And for our news abroad, a powerful earthquake struck Turkey and Syria, leaving thousands of people dead, injured, or trapped in the destruction. Maven Dog will give us the details live. Maeve? Cath rescue workers scrambled in the rain and snow to pull survivors from the rubble after a massive 7.8 magnitude quake followed by dozens of aftershocks 
toppled buildings in Turkey and the war-stricken Syria. According to the Damascus government, 1,602 people were killed in Syria, while Turkey's emergency services reported the death toll standing at 3,419. More than 20,000 were recorded as injured, and nearly 24,500 personnel continued to search for survivors. Thousands of buildings collapsed in the Syrian cities of Aleppo and Hama, all the way to Diyarbakir in Turkey. In Turkey, Kath, more than, than 5,700 buildings were destroyed, including hospitals, with one collapsing in Iskenderun. The earthquake was described by Turkish President Tayyip Erdogan as the worst to hit the country since 1939, and reassured that authorities are doing their best despite the cold winter season. Meanwhile, Syria is also being hit with a cholera outbreak, along with the harsh weather conditions, including heavy rain and snow. Several nations, as well as the European Union and the North Atlantic Treaty Organization, or NATO, reached out to offer help, mostly for Turkey. While Russia and Israel promised to help Syria, but it was not confirmed if any assistance would go to the rebel-held area in the northwest. Back to you, Kath. Thank you, Maven Dog, for that report live from Australia. To compete with the success of OpenAI's ChatGPT, Google has revealed its new chatboard, Bard. Bard is built on a large language model which are trained on an accumulation of data online to generate fascinating responses from prompts by the user. Google search faced its most significant risk in years, two months after ChatGPT was released, which prompted them to declare a code red due to the rise of artificial intelligence or AI. ChatGPT, a chatbot that quickly gained public attention due to its detailed responses and articulate answers, was released by OpenAI in November 2022. Microsoft also confirmed plans to invest billions in OpenAI and announced that they would incorporate some of its product to ChatGPT as well as the possibility of integrating the tool to its search engine Bing. Sundar Pichai, Google CEO, made the announcement that BARD will be open to trusted testers and will be made available to the public in the coming weeks. We'll share more global stories with you later, but for now, back to you, Harleen. Thank you, Kath. For those watching or live streaming on YouTube, please click the subscribe button you see on your screen and ring the bell for notification. You may also follow us on Facebook. Fifteen violators were apprehended during clearing operations led by the Metropolitan Manila Development Authority or MMDA in Manila today. JP Nunez will tell us why. Metropolitan Manila Development Authority or MMDA led the clearing operations early this morning, February 7, along Road 10 in Manila. According to MMDA Acting Chairman Romando Artes, this road must be cleared as it is a major artery going in and out of the port where importing and exporting of goods take place. Fifteen violators were apprehended, including illegal parking during the operation. Among them was a truck parked at the entrance of Del Pan Port. The MMDA said they will coordinate with the Philippine National Police or PNP when conducting operation. This to ensure that none of their personnel will be injured or harmed by violators. Simula po ngayon kami po ay uh, makikipag-coordinate sa police, sa ating kapulisan para matulungan po yung ating mga tauhan na mapanatili yung uh, peace and order habang kami ay nag operate the MMDA said there were three reported incidents where their clearing operations team member were harmed while conducting operation. The incident happened in Commonwealth Quezon City, Baclaran in Pasay, and in Manila. Meanwhile, the Department of the Interior and Local Government or DILG said barangay officials will maintain cleanliness and obstruction-free road in their jurisdiction. Those who will neglect their duty will face appropriate sanctions. Kaya po kami sa DILG ay nakatutok at nagmomonitor at uh, lalong lalo na yung mga barangay captain na nagpapabaya sa kanilang tungkulin ay kasalukuyan po namin ginagawa ng report yung mga nagpapabaya. At darating po tayo sa punto na yung talagang mga hindi tumutupad sa kanilang katungkulan ay kakasuhan po yan. JP Nunez, UNTV, News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God.
Meanwhile, the inflation for the month of January peaked at 8.7% compared to the 8.1% last December 2022. This is the highest since November 2008, which peaked at 9.1%. According to the Philippine Statistics Authority, or PSA, Bernadette Tinoy will tell us why. The Philippine Statistics Authority, or PSA, released the report today for January inflation, which climbs at 8.7%. The headline inflation was higher than the 8.1% reported last December 2022 and is the highest inflation rate since November 2008, which peaked at 9.1% due to global financial crisis. PSA Undersecretary and National Statistician Dennis Mapa said that housing, water, electricity, gas, and other fuels contribute as the main reason for the increased rate of inflation in the country. May pagka-global yung effect niya eh. Halos lahat medyo tumataas ang inflation sa ibang bansa, hindi lang naman Philippines. Ngayon, kapag hindi mo itinaas ang sweldo ng mga uh, minimum wage earners, Malamang, hindi na, sila, hindi na nila ma-afford yung mga usual na binibili nila before ng inflation. Pinakamalaking uh, weight or item uh, na may pinakamataas na weight dito sa housing, water, electricity, gas, and other fuels ay yung rental, housing rental. The inflation rate in National Capital Region or NCR also peaked at 8.6% from 7.6% last December and the main factor contribute for the increased rate was the housing, water, electricity and other fuels which peaked at 6.9% and 66.5% share for the month of January. While Western Visayas region peaked the highest inflation outside Metro Manila with the rate of 10.3%, and Eastern Visayas or Region 8 is the lowest with 6.9% inflation rate. MAPA said that there are items that need to be detected which resulted the high inflation. He added that the agency will monitor the trend of the survey for the next month. Well, this is just the first month, no? Although uh, I, I know people were expecting that uh, it will go down. Unfortunately, uh, there are items nga na medyo hindi natin uh, masyadong detect. Titignan natin uh, kung uh, may paggalaw ba sa, sa mga susunod na buwan, lalo na yung mga nagkakaroon ng renewal on those uh, months and uh, we will uh, monitor this closely. Bernadette Tino, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. The Department of Health is working closely with the Department of Education to better improve its mental health services, especially for students. Mental health is considered to be one of the serious problems that the youth has been facing nowadays. Gladys Tuabi tells us why. The Department of Education, or DepEd, has recorded more than 2,000 students who attempted to commit suicide from 2021 to 2022. This only shows that mental health is one of the serious problems that the youth has been facing nowadays. In line with this, Department of Health, or DOH officer in charge, under Secretary Maria Rosario Verjere, says that they are closely working with DepEd to improve its mental health services, especially for students. It's not going to be the same for every person. Iba-iba po ang capacity ng isang tao to respond and to uh, become resilient on their own. At iba-iba rin po ang mga kailangan ng bawat tao para sila po ay, uh, how do you say this, para sila ay maging mentally healthy. It's not going to be the same for each person. According to Verjere, they already had a final meeting with PhilHealth for the mental health package accessible to the public. This includes counseling for the students. And lastly, kami po ay nagkaroon na ng final na meeting with the mental health package na you offer ng PhilHealth para mas maging accessible para sa ating mga kababayan, even to our students, itong ating mental health services, kung saan hindi naman kailangan laging ginagamot, hindi kailangan i-discriminate. Just the counseling minsan ay nakakatulong na para sa ating mga estudyante. So we are working closely with the Department of Education on this. Aside from this, DOH will also dedicate mental health hotlines in every area where schools can also access. Gladys Tuabi, UNTV News and Rescue. We serve the people, we give glory to God. In other news, flower prices in Dangwa, Manila has dropped due to excessive supply from Baguio City. 
The supply of flowers from Baguio is excessive because January to February is the harvest season of different types of flowers. Number of flower buyers are still low in Dangwa, Manila. The price of roses now range from 350 pesos to 1,100 pesos. Meanwhile, those who are saving can buy dried flowers for souvenirs and gifts for their families and loved ones and it costs 100 to 350 pesos. Expect the price of red and white roses to increase in the coming days. So ngayon po sir, maraming supply. Medyo matumal po. Gawa ng maraming supply po na galing bagyo. The Philippine peso currency weakens at 55.085 from 54.39 Monday rate. The depreciation was due to the 8.7% inflation for the month of January released by the Philippine Statistics Authority or PSA today, February 7th. Last February 2, the peso currency strengthened at 53 pesos to $1 and the Banco Central ng Pilipinas or BSP projected a lower inflation for the month of January since it peaked at 8.1% last December 2022. While the trade for dollar went down to $1.053 billion from $1.165 billion last Friday. Meanwhile, the Bank of the Philippine Islands or BPI said that the trend for peso currency this year will depend on the United States Federal Reserve. United Nations Chief Antonio Guterres has warned nations that further escalation in the Russia-Ukraine war could mean the world is heading towards wider war. Nerisa Dando reports why, live. Yes, Nerisa? Good evening, Kat. As Russia's invasion to Ukraine is approaching its one-year anniversary, the prospects for peace kept diminishing and chances of further escalation and bloodshed kept growing. United Nations Chief Antonio Guterres somebody said in his recent speech at the UN General Assembly outlining the organization's priorities this year. The UN chief also referenced other threats in different parts of the world. He mentioned the conflict between Israeli-Palestinian, the irregularities in Myanmar, women's rights in Afghanistan, and the deteriorating security in the Sahel region. Last month, top scientists and security experts had moved the doomsday clock, a symbolic clock signaling the annihilation of humanity to just 90 seconds until midnight. But that is said, he was taking it as a warning and as a warning sign and urged the nations to wake up and work harder to achieve peace everywhere. Kath? Narisa, what are the other priorities that the UN chief outlined in his speech? Uh, he mentioned three priorities. One, of course, is the invasion of Russia to Ukraine, followed by extreme poverty, where he stressed the need for radical transformation in the economic and financial system. And the last one is the climate change, where they, where they will have a thorough discussion about it this coming September. Back to you, Kath. Thank you. Nerisa Danda reporting live from Japan. About 5,000 people were forced to flee the area near the Pennsylvania state border and are not allowed to return yet after officials conducted a controlled release of a toxic chemical from a derailed 50-car train in Ohio. Marvi Delfin details why, live. Marvi? Yes, on Friday night, February 3, a massive fire broke out after a train derailed in northeastern Ohio. Following this incident, a controlled discharge of vinyl chloride began on Monday afternoon amidst the threat of a possible major explosion from the train disaster carrying hazardous materials that went off the tracks. According to the officials, the five cars from the train incident were releasing toxic fumes and shooting deadly shrapnel up to a mile away. 
Mayor Trent Conaway stated that residents of East Palestine, Ohio, are still unable to return home after an immediate evacuation just one to two miles of the crash site. Ohio Governor Mike DeWine ordered a village of 5,000 people near the Pennsylvania border to leave the area due to their poor air and water quality, while about 500 people in the area refused to leave their homes by Sunday. However, authorities continue to knock on doors to ensure people have left. At the latest, Norfolk Southern's regional manager Scott Deutsch declared that the controlled train explosion was successful. Once the area is declared safe, they, they will start to wreck and move the train cars out of the tracks into a safe area. Ohio National Guard and law enforcement will continue to block off roads into Palestine and the East Palestine City School District will be closed for the rest of the week. Back to you, Kath. Thank you, Marvie Dauphin, reporting live from Australia. And those are the reasons behind the news in other parts of the globe. I'm Kat Tumaraos, live from Bangkok, Thailand. Good evening. Meanwhile, based on the Department of Health's biosurveillance report from January 30 to February 3, 2023, out of 1,778 sequence samples, 3,196 samples were classified as XBB, including the first case of XBB.1.5. Experts say this is the most transmissible form of COVID-19. This is considered as a variant of interest or VOI due to its increasing prevalence globally and enhanced immunovating properties. The country has also detected its first cases of the new American variant CH.1.1. According to the GOH, the CH.1.1 subvariant, a descendant sublineage of BA.2.75, has been classified by the European Center for Disease Prevention and Control as a variant under monitoring. This is also due to its increasing prevalence and potential immune escape. The University of the Philippines Philippine General Hospital, or UPPGH, will need more nurses for the construction of a new cancer center. According to UPPGH Special Assistant to the, to the Director, Dr. Jose Rafael Malfori, many hospitals are currently suffering due to lack of patient caregivers, not only in the country but also abroad. More nurses are needed, especially for the new cancer center that will soon rise in the hospital. Every now and then, nurses in the Philippines are filing their resignations to apply abroad for a higher compensation. We need more nurses. Uh, we are suffering some of the, the losses of nurses that many hospitals, the whole country, probably the whole world is feeling right now. So every month, you know, there's a few resignations of nurses. So we need to retain them. You know, we do hire, but the rate of loss is faster. So some units cannot, cannot open to full capacity, and that's what is also limiting our return to uh, full capacity to pre-pandemic levels. So that's the immediate one. Uh, it's a malaki ang usapan dyan to how to solve a problem like human resource. Our Kasambahay, as the world faces these trying times amid the pandemic caused by coronavirus, we are inviting everyone to join the global prayer for humanity. Good day. I'm Brother Eli Soriano of the members of the Church of God International. I want to invite you to join us in a minute of prayer every day to pray for humanity and the whole world as we go through these perilous times. safety measures like washing of hands and strengthening of our immune systems may help us through this horrible predicament. There is still no precaution or cure more powerful than God's mighty intervention. And we need His intervention now more than ever. It doesn't matter what religion you are in or what denomination you belong. This is an invitation for all the people around the world who cares for the future of their family, friends, loved ones, and humanity as a whole. Everybody is welcome to pray with us. 
For more details, you can check out the description box below. Thank you very much and I hope to hear from you soon. May God bless you. Before we close, we will leave you with a word, giving glory to God. From the book of 1 Timothy, chapter 4, verse 7, it says, But refuse profane and old, old wives' fables, and exercise thyself rather unto godliness. behind the news February 7, 2023. Reasons we deliver to you as they unfold. I am Harley Delgado. And because we need to know, we will always ask why. I am William Theo. We serve the people. We give glory to God.